Hello everyone and welcome back to our series on urban energy modeling with Dragonfly. And in the previous several videos we worked towards building an urban scale energy model using this from building footprints workflow that you see on the right of the screen here. Uh, we got all the way to the end to simulating that model and loading the results into Grasshopper. Um, but I think at this point we can say that we've got a good understanding of how to create uh, Dragonfly models from from footprint data sets. So in this video, we're going to start to focus on these other two methods for assembling Dragonfly models. Uh, and in particular, we're going to really uh, dive into the from building solids workflow uh, that we have for generating Dragonfly buildings from these closed massing solids uh, that you see here in the center of the screen. So uh, you might remember I mentioned early in the series that our from building solids workflow is probably one of the most popular ways of creating uh, urban scale models, uh, typically because at, during master planning phases, early scale, er, early design master plans, uh, these massings tend to be readily available. Uh, and so it's very useful to have workflows that will take those massings and essentially turn them into geometry that can be sent off to an energy simulation engine. So all right. So the example file that we're going to be working from here is uh, can be found if you go to our repo of uh, github.com, ladybug tools, LBT grasshopper samples, uh, you'll find the sample file if you go to samples and then to the dragonfly folder you, and download the files, you'll find a from building solids.3dm file. This is the file that we're going to be working uh, with to start off the creation of our, of our urban scale energy model. Uh, with solids. So I'm just going to open up this file right now. You'll see I put in the description of the video the actual link to this file. So uh, if you if you uh, lose track of our, our repo there, you can always get it directly from that link. Uh, and you'll see opening this file, right, this is just a, a, a district very different than our footprints district. This is a much higher density. Uh, and you can see there are really only two types of, uh, of buildings that we're simulating here, these offices and some residential buildings. We also have some context of a parking garage uh, and, and a few other structures here uh, that we want to account for in our model. But essentially in this video, we're going to take these solids that we have here, these closed uh, room solids, and we're going to turn those into Dragonfly buildings that we can then combine together into a model. So starting off here, I'm going to open up Grasshopper and wait for it to load up. And the very first thing that I want to do is just to bring the, the relevant geometry that I care about into Grasshopper here. Uh, so first things first, I'm going to double click on the canvas here in my Grasshopper definition and bring up a, a native Grasshopper geometry parameter. Uh, and this is what I'm going to use to select all of the, uh, the buildings of a certain type. So I'm going to bring all of the offices in uh, with just this, this uh, geometry parameter here. Uh, I know we use the geometry pipeline component to bring the geometry from uh, Rhino to Grasshopper in our, our from building footprints workflow, but I think this model is going to be simpler enough. We don't have as many building types that we're trying to model. Uh, so in this case, all that I'm simply going to do is that I'm going to right click on the office layer and select objects. And that'll ensure that I've selected all of the, the poly surfaces that represent these uh, office buildings. You'll see it'll say nine poly surfaces added to selection. And with these poly surfaces selected, I'm going to go into Grasshopper and right click on my uh, uh, geometry parameter component and set multiple geometries. Okay, and that'll bring in essentially these geometries that I have in the Rhino scene uh, as, um, as, as solid geometries. You can see if I hover over this, it'll tell me I have nine reference VREPs. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing for the residential buildings. I'm just gonna copy and paste this geometry parameter. And uh, let's see, I'm going to go uh, over to the residence uh, um, uh, layer. I'm going to right click on that and select objects. And that'll give me 21 poly surfaces representing these residential buildings. And then I will right click on the, on the little geometry parameter here and I will say set multiple geometries. Okay, and now you should see, right, when I, I click on this, the those buildings turn green. When I click on these, those buildings turn green. Uh, so that lets me know that I have the actual geometry uh, in the grasshopper scene right now. Uh, so in order to make sure that I, I don't necessarily need to rely on this Rhino file, I'm going to do the same thing that I did in the from building footprints uh, workflow, which is just to internalize this data. Uh, and that'll mean that it's no longer dependent upon the, the Rhino file. Again, this isn't necessary if you always want to have this grasshopper definition open up with, with the corresponding Rhino file, but I'd prefer to kind of make a standalone grasshopper definition here. So again, I'm going to internalize this data. Okay. 
Uh, and let's see, I'm going to go, let me make this full grasshopper here. And uh, maybe just to make things easier to follow, I'll make sure instead of just labeling this geo, I will call this uh, office. Uh, and, you know, I can make that display this text by right clicking and uh, saying uh, always draw a name. This will just make it easier for me to follow. I mean, I only have two building types in this, so so it's not really uh, there's not a very high risk of me uh, really not uh, not remembering which is which. But if you, you can imagine, if I had more uh, building types here, I'd probably want to uh, make this clear. Okay, all right. So I have my geometries in Grasshopper here, and now I'm going to go over to the Dragonfly tab, and you'll see right next to the from building footprint component that we used in the previous videos, there is a very similar looking component that is just called Dragonfly from building solid. So if I drag and drop this onto my canvas here um, and give it a few seconds, the first time you drop a component on the canvas, it's going to load up the kind of the core libraries uh, that the components uh, all, all use under the hood. Uh, so, all right. So we can see instead of taking, uh, you know, a footprint geometry <clears throat> as we had for the, the front building footprints, this is meant to take a full solid geometry here. So I'm going to go and I'm just going to connect up my office buildings uh, to the building geo here. So, okay. <clears throat> That's one thing down. Uh, the next thing I need, so I, I have to connect the floor to floor. So for this step, uh, I want you guys to be to really be able to follow along in terms of understanding the different options that you have here, because you actually have more options for how you subdivide the volume when you create buildings from solids as opposed to from footprints. Um, and you remember in in when we created buildings from footprints, we had to make a list of data like you know uh, of every story height essentially had to be had to be plugged into this, uh, and so. You don't. You you could use that same method uh, for the from building solids workflow, but there are much more streamlined ways to do this. Uh, and the way I'd really like to show you this. All right, I'm going to very simply at first just plug in a uh, you know a panel that has the number five in it, and we'll just say right. Maybe we'll say we want uh, kind of one story at five uh, five Rhino units tall. In this case, five meters. Uh, and so if I connect that up to here. And then I'm going to set this uh, this Boolean toggle to run to true, uh, just so that we can get an output here and understand what the, what this five uh, stories have done here. Uh, I will set this to true, and then you'll see out of this component we are getting, and you know, remember we plugged in nine closed volumes. We're getting nine dragonfly buildings, all with kind of <laughs> very generic names because we didn't plug in anything for a name. Um, but in this case, yeah, so we'll change that in a second. But the important thing I want you guys to be realized is, you know, for each solid that you get, for each BREP you plug into this component, you get one Dragonfly building. Okay, so let's actually see if we can preview what these buildings look like. Uh, we've got a lot going on in our Rhino scene right now. So to make things a little easier, let me see. I'm going to go to the this layer, the kind of uh, building typology layer. Uh, I'll turn off offices and residences. Um, I mean, maybe we, we don't even need the trees right now. I just want to make things a little easier to see. Um, you know, all right, we can leave the pavement and some of the other stuff. Uh, we'll get back to that at a later point. Uh, but also we have things in our grasshopper definition, right, that are previewing right here. So uh, I'm going to turn the preview off on these two things. So the easy way that I'll do that is just selecting these two, right-clicking on the canvas and saying preview off. Uh, all right, now, now things will be a little easier to see in the scene. So... What I essentially want to do, I'm going to go over to the Visualize tab here, the Dragonfly Visualize tab, uh, and I guess we can just simply take this DF Visualize All for now. And if I drop this component onto the canvas, right, you'll see we can just connect up our Dragonfly objects. So I'm going to connect our Dragonfly buildings here, and we can see what uh, what is actually happening when we plugged in a five for the floor to floor height here. All right, and you see basically what's happened. <laughs> This is kind of it's not really any type of uh, district that I would simulate, right? But it's taken, it's created basically one story at five meters tall, and then the entire rest of the solid is uh, right is just uh, you know a single single story. Uh, so right, so it's trying to be faithful to the you know the full height of the solid that you have in the Rhino scene, uh, but clearly we're losing a lot of information here. Uh, so, all right, so one thing I could start to do is, right, I can right-click on this uh, and change this to multi-line data. So we now can plug in a list of values. And let's say, you know, I can do the same thing that I did with the, the from building footprints, right? I could say the first floor is at five, 
The next story is at four. The next story is, you know, above that is at four. And then maybe the one above that is at three. Uh, right. And you'll see now it actually starts to divide up these volumes a little more. Right. When I plug in a list of, uh, of these values. So and again, it's trying to respect these values that I plugged in. So the first floor of all these buildings is five meters tall. The next two are at, at four meters. And then the, the following one is at three meters. Uh, but in this case, right, we still right. It's still trying to take the rest of the volume and just continue all the way to the top of the solid. So. Wouldn't it be nice if there were just a way to say, uh, you know, until you get to the top of the solid, continue to use this this floor height. Uh, and that's exactly if you hover over the input description here, uh, this is exactly what you can what you can do here. So if you use this kind of convention of using the at symbol, uh, this will allow you to basically say, you know, uh, continue at at uh, this this three meter height or so for the rest of the building. So if I were to say, take this last item here, and instead of just having, oops, instead of just having three, if it was at symbol and then three, right, you'll see that now it's going to subdivide the building in a way that's a bit closer to what I expected, right? Now we're actually, you know, divvying up the volumes. We're, we're respecting the, you know, the way that the, the, the plan changes over the height of the building. Um, and we actually see if you continue to read this description here, you actually see there's an easier way that we could represent these, you know, this two fours that we have here. Instead of saying, uh, you know, uh, having two items in the list, I can simply just have one item at the list and I can say two at four. And this is basically saying, right, I want two stories, at, you know, after the first floor is at five stories, I want two stories at a height of four meters. And then again, after that, it's just everything at three meters. So if I go and I do this right now, you'll see we still have the same exact way that we were dividing up the model, right? Five meters, four meters, four meters, and then three for the rest of the height of the building. Okay, so this is a critical thing to understand in the in the from building uh, solids workflow. It's because, I mean, more often than not, you have various different floor heights over the, over the height of your building. Uh, and especially ground floors, they tend to be different in, in uh, districts with skyscrapers like this. You'll often have, let's say, retail or restaurants on those ground floors, uh, which will be very different than the um, uh, than the than the the kind of nature of the of the stories above those. So this is how you can do that. Um, I'm going to see. Let me see what else I want to change here before I go and I make my residential building. So you can see there's an option for perimeter offsets, uh, just like what we had with the the from building footprints workflow. So that'll give you some automatic core perimeter zoning uh, if you select that. Uh, because this is such a large model, I'm going to stick with modeling one basically one room or one zone per story, um, because I think that'll be good enough for my purposes here. But again, you should you should uh, feel free to to use that if you need it. Um, let me see, we, we wanna plug in a name. So instead of having these generic building 37, you can see it just continues to count upward every time the component runs. So instead of doing this, I'm going to plug in a name for these buildings. Uh, maybe we'll just call them commercial, commercial, like just to be able to identify them. And you'll see because we're plugging in a list, the component is gonna be smart enough when I plug in just that one name, they aren't all gonna get the same exact name, right? It'll be commercial one, commercial two, commercial three. Uh, you know, you can still plug in a list of names here uh, that are aligned with the buildings if you want to be able to, uh, you know, match one building to another. But I think this is good enough for my purposes here. Uh, let's see, what else? We need to plug in a program. So let me go full grasshopper here because we're not as uh, interested in seeing the geometry at this point. So for the program, uh, I'll do the same thing that I did in my from building footprints workflow. I'm going to go over to the Honeybee Energy tab and grab our HB building programs. And I'm just going to make uh, these buildings. I'm going to, you know, you know that we have several building templates to choose from that will assign all the schedules uh, and loads according to, to those templates. I'm going to just use the large office uh, program uh, for these for these commercial buildings, which I think will be suitable enough for our cases, for our purposes. Uh, and again, we need a construction set, uh, just like we did in our from building footprints. Um, this is all review, so I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. I'm going to assign a construction set according to the climate. Uh, and I'll actually give away, <laughs> so this is, it's not in Buffalo, New York, uh, like our, our last from building footprints file, but this is in the same climate zone. This is over in Boston, actually, this site. Uh, it's a, it's an existing one. 
uh, that uh, is probably still going to see some development, at least in the coming decades, uh, you know, as, as people continue to build over this highway here. Um, but in any case, yeah, so it's the same climate zone, uh, which is a cool, cool climate zone, climate zone five. Uh, so I'm just going to drag our drop down of HB climate zones, drag and drop this onto the canvas. And lo and behold, I mean, if you can't tell, I'm a little biased. Probably I've, I've lived in climate zone five for a lot of my <laughs> a lot of my life. So forgive my bias, uh, but uh, you should definitely whatever whatever climate zone you're in, uh, you know, which again, every place on Earth has a climate zone uh, that it can be classified into on this number scale. Uh, obviously, feel free to plug in that if you're in a different climate. But I'm going to connect up our construction set to this. Um, and then lastly, you'll see that there's an option to set the building to be conditioned or unconditioned. Uh, if you hover over that, that, that should tell you, I mean, by default, I, if you, yeah, all of our, all of the buildings are conditioned. Uh, so I'm going to leave that as is right now because, uh, it's kind of rare. I think that maybe if I had a, a certain type of warehouse or parking garage that I was really trying to model, maybe the lighting use in, uh, that I, that could be unconditioned, but in this case, I, I, I think it's important, uh, yeah, to leave that as the default. So. All right, so I've already basically <laughs> created some office buildings here, right? Uh, we've got we've got everything you know set up basically for these buildings. I'm going to quickly do the same thing for our residential buildings. So uh, in order to uh, to put these together, let's see, I'm going to drag and drop another uh, from building solid component on the canvas. I'll connect up our residential closed solids. Um, in this case, instead of uh, you know having the first floor at five, the next floor at, uh, at, at four, etc. I think I'm just going to set all of these to have a floor to floor height of, of three up their whole height. I mean, we don't see as much, you know, usually there isn't commercial uh, or there isn't retail or, or restaurants on the ground floor of residential as often as there is for office. So I'm simply going to type at three and that should be good enough. That'll basically tell my, my, uh, this component that I want every story of these of these buildings to be at at three meters tall uh again no perimeter offset i'll set a name of we'll just call them residential residential okay all right that'll be our name right and that'll use the same naming convention that we have here for commercial right commercial one two three four five uh let's see our program i'll just i'm going to copy and paste our building programs list and we will set this to be equal to we'll just do mid-rise apartment these aren't no, I mean, some of them are a little closer to high rise, but I think mid rise is probably good enough for for uh, the vast majority of these buildings. And then lastly, our construction set. I'm going to do the same thing that I did for the uh, the commercial, the the office buildings here. Okay. All right. Now I just need a toggle to true to run this. I'll I'll copy that from up here. The same toggle that I used uh, for our commercial buildings. I'll just copy that down here. Uh, connect that up to this component, and then we can use the same same type of workflow that we use to 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 check the outputs here. So I'm going to connect our Dragonfly objects to this component. You'll see again we have um, what is this 21 uh, closed B reps, uh, and so we're getting 21 uh, residential buildings coming out of this component. Um, I'm also right. So the way that these are being divided up seems correct. All the stories are at three meters tall. Uh, so this makes sense to me. And so at this point, I think I have all of the Dragonfly buildings that I need. Uh, so just to kind of top this off, I'm, I'm definitely not going to simulate. This is a very large model, so I'm not going to simulate uh, this, this model in the course of the, the, the series here. But I do want you guys to be aware of just how to how to bring everything together into a um, – into a simulatable model if you if you want to use this workflow obviously so uh, I'm going to grab this DF model this dragonfly model component and I can just connect up simply all of my buildings all of my uh, office buildings uh, and then here let me group this just so so it's a little easier to manage I can keep things closer to each other now so I can connect up my office buildings I can connect up my residential buildings uh, and then lastly, and uh, you know, we didn't really use context shade in our previous videos. So I just want to show you the workflow for adding this context shade. Uh, and then I think we'll call that, call that a wrap for this video. Uh, so, uh, you'll notice if you go all the way to the very right side of the dragonfly create sub tab, there's a component called dragonfly context shade. 
you just drag and drop this onto the component onto the canvas here this component onto the canvas you'll see that this just takes some geometry you can name your context shade if they you know if it's meant to represent different things like parking garages versus vegetation or something like that uh, and again you can assign constructions and everything to this uh, I'm simply going to take all the defaults I'm just want to bring in the geometry here this context geometry which is just this garage here so I'm going to right click on the context say select objects to make sure that I've selected the five poly surfaces that represent this context shade um, and I will double click here uh, and bring up a native grasshopper geometry parameter and the same way that I brought in the other the, the geometry for the buildings I'm gonna right click on that geometry parameter and say set multiple geometries and we'll see that geometry come into grasshopper here I'm gonna internalize it just like I did in the last one uh, why don't we give this a name of context so that I can keep track of it you know and change that to be text so I can see it uh, and then lastly I can connect that to the to the geometry input of this uh, uh, of our context dragonfly context component and you guys can see right the output uh, of this right we're just going to get five context shade objects for the five closed bureaus that I plugged in here and this can go straight into our dragonfly model so we can account for the shading of these geometries uh, in our in our urban simulation so okay so with that I mean Maybe one other thing I'll just show you, I'll turn the preview off here and I'll hide this layer just so that you guys see that in the same way that we could check the geometry of the, um, you know, of our individual buildings, uh, I can just use this Dragonfly Visualize All to preview uh, our entire model in this case, right? So we can see all that geometry has been accounted for, uh, all of the buildings are being divvied up into stories the way that we'd expect them to be. Uh, so, right, so this is all, all ready to go is a simulatable Dragonfly model that we're getting out of here. You can translate this to GeoJSON, simulate with UrbanOpt in the same way uh, that we did uh, previously. So, now you guys have a sense of how the, the from building solids workflow uh, happens. Uh, in the next video, I just want to do a few more tweaks to this model, show you guys a few nuances of this workflow and a few uh, ways that you can try and customize uh, the, the various different stories of, of the buildings that you create this way. Uh, so, uh, and after that, I think we'll move on to an example with the, with the rooms, the stories, the buildings workflow. So thank you guys for sticking out through this a little longer video here. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.